Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to another episode of Forza Motorsport 3. Today's episode number 15. If you want to help support the channel, then leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe, and feel free to check out the other videos in the Forza Mega Series. Now let's get into the content. This video was streamed live on Twitch. Come watch us live with the link in the description. If you want to get cheap game keys for Xbox, PlayStation or PC, then check out Eniba in the description down below. All right, so we're going to be doing the Chrysler track days. Uh, I'm going to be taking the Crossfire, starting off with Road Atlanta, the Dira Test track, Sakuba, and then Mazda Raceway. Let's get going. All right, here we go. <laughs> Suffocation. There is... Oh. I've just noticed that this isn't the one with the little flap on the back. It's got like an actual wing on it. That is strange. I think ra there are some radio stations where they're uncensored, but a lot of the time they have the 9pm watershed, which means they're not allowed to have excessive swearing. Uh, live shows are exempt from it, but they need to try and do their best to censor them. Um, and avoid it. Like, commentators wouldn't get away with swearing because they have the intention to not swear. But, like, even then, 9pm isn't... It's weird that 9pm is the time now. Like, anything before that all has to be bleeped out. Anything after that doesn't have to be. If they don't follow those rules, the um, television police will get on their asses. I can remember um, a couple of years ago, the X Factor. They had a final. Um, and they were scheduled for the show to be um, an hour and a half long. But the actual live running, for some unknown reason, only went on for 47 minutes. Which meant there was 43 minutes of adverts, which... Um, Got the ITV. Was it ITV or Channel 4? I'm not sure. I think it was ITV. Got ITV in a big amount of trouble because of the fact that they had run 43 minutes of adverts over 47 minutes of footage. I think mathematically speaking, they're only allowed up to 10 minutes per 50 minutes. Uh, I will put that song after I've done this race, if I remember. But yeah, the, the internet's become extremely woke to the point that you're not even allowed to do anything or say anything without risking getting cancelled. Like, I don't care at this point. I'll say what I want to say. I'm not going to be an arsehole. But like, I'm not going to bow down to other people because they want me to fulfill their perfect ideologies either. Like, you know... It's a very, very touchy place, the internet. And I, I will always blame TikTok for it. Because TikTok gave so many people an easy platform where they could video themselves saying random shit. You can say anything as long as you're on the right side of the narrative. Yeah. But that means that nobody... The narrative is always changing, which is the problem. And it's not changing in a way of good or bad or anything like that. It's just changing by waves and trends. Rather than... Uh, I, I, I'm going to say it anyways. I don't care. If I get cancelled, I get cancelled. When it comes to... Um, many years ago. Many, many years ago. People didn't really like trans people at all. That was what life was many, many years ago. But as of um, probably the last 10, 15 years, it's become a lot more acceptable. Um, it should have been acceptable from the start. Granted, I don't think anyone should hate on anyone unless they're an asshole. But like, it's, it's become more normal, right? 
But that's taken some time. We're now in a society where we're expected to instantly, within a week, have changed our entire society to fit in a new state of mind, whatever, to suit a small demographic of people before then the next week we have more. Yeah, exactly. Agreed. Agreed. I will agree with that. Thank you for the follow as well, Chaotic. Not bad. Good first race. Level 1 on the car. Oh, not quite driver level 22. Or 23. I've forgotten. I've lost count. 20% uh, discount on intake manifold and throttle body upgrades. Let's go. I also do find it extremely weird. I'm not going to get into depth with it. But I've seen a lot on the internet of... Here's the weird, really weird thing. So, I have no problem with teachers that are... Um... I've seen people who are claustrophobic act in a small space. They are terrified. I've never seen, been terrified of someone who's trans or gay. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. I appreciate it, Kodo. Thank you very much for the like. Um, yeah, that makes sense. Like, I'm... The, the term phobia is to have a fear of something. So... Technically speaking, even if you hate... From the terminology and the actual definition, it's having a fear or a hatred of something. Hatred is sort of adding on to it, but if you hate something, normally it's because you have a fear of it. So it makes sense why people use it as a terminology. So if you are transphobic, you hate trans people. That's just what it is. Um, I'm obviously not like that. And if I knew anyone that was like that, I wouldn't... Because I think people should be accepted. So... Um, no matter what. The one thing that I have seen... I'll get, I'll get back onto my topic I was talking about before. So, I've seen a lot on TikTok of... Teachers who are... Are different to me. Um, who identify differently different sexualities whatever I've got no problem with that but the problem I do have is how much they push it onto younger kids and what's worse is I would have less of a problem if they were in like secondary schools teaching kids where that's actually a lot more of an influence and a lot more them identifying themselves and struggling to learn that. A lot of the time, secondary school is where it's a lot tougher, but this is like in primary school where they're confusing kids, and that doesn't sit right with me. Like, by all means, I understand once they get older, teach them about it. While they're growing up, teach them about trans people, gay people, whatever. Teach them that other people don't follow the same ideology of X, Y, whatever, but don't sway their mind and, you know, teach them to be accepting no matter what. You can do that without influencing and making, because they're just as confused. They want to be like their friends. Let's be honest. That's all little kids want to do. So you... It's a bit weird. I think it's a bit weird. By all means, I've got no problem with them teaching them about it. If I had kids, and which I don't. I don't plan on it anytime soon. Fucking hell. But like, you know, if they were teaching my kids about that stuff, I wouldn't really care. As long as they weren't influencing them that it's what they should be. Let them make that decision. You know. I know a lot of people will say, Oh, that's transphobic to say that. Fuck no. I never said I 
<laughs> like, people just get the, the wrong idea of, like, racism and phobias now. That they think anything that's negative is instantly a hatred against it. And it's just like, fuck off. That was a proper Tourette's moment. <laughs> Let's have a look at this car, then. She goes, I go, we roll, we go. Flying over the city, sounds to Rio. It's real. Love that. And there we go. That's the Cigaris. Uh, so a lot of people are going to say this is... This is a questionable video anyways. Fuck it. Anyone on YouTube? Hi. I hope you enjoyed this. <laughs> when it... When it comes to the sporting, unfortunately, science and biology proves that men are more powerful. Granted... If you were to get any of those female athletes to go against me in, like, swimming or whatever, they're going to whoop my ass. Because they are much more powerful than me. But mathematically speaking, a male athlete... This is a good song. Oh, The original's actually really good as well, Kodo. But the remix is awesome as well, so you got to listen to that. But yeah, mathematically speaking, a, a, a biological man is always going to be stronger than a biological woman at their peaks. Always. Unless we start doing genetic modifications where we can make biological women stronger than men, that's never going to happen. If it does happen, good. I think equal, equal rights, equal fights, you know, all that. Exactly. Because, unfortunately, there is an unfair advantage. I don't think it's unfair. I think it's biology. There's nothing really you can do about it. Um, other than to keep the two categories separate so that they're fair. Keep women going against women, men going against men. That's the fairest way to do it. But if you're a, a trans... Is it trans man, trans woman? A man who wants to identify as a woman. You should still be in biological male sports. By all means, on on the charts, when it comes up showing, there should be a box that says female. To respect their pronouns, by all means, definitely. Because if they w feel more comfortable being a woman and identifying as a woman, then they should be displayed as a woman. On all the charts, it should come up as um, woman, female, whatever, but should still take part in biological male sports. Same with vice versa. If you've got a, by all means, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I think even though. If a biological female was stronger than a biological man, I still think they should stay in female sports because, you know, I mean, we have never heard of a biological female who is transmasculine going into male sports. It's unheard of, really. Like, competitive solo sports. Team sports, it probably happens quite a bit. By the way, this is a remix, Kodo. It's a tune. But, you know, like... This is a difficult world we live in. Such a difficult world. We've got governments, we've got internet, we've just got... This is a tune. Oof! <laughs> yeah. By the way, Chaotic, I never asked. Uh, how did you find my stream today? This is the first time you've been here, isn't it? Because you followed, so... How do you find my stream? Uh, seven grand. Not bad. 
Uh, got 10% discount on valves upgrades by Mopar Chrysler. Yeah. Dun 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 dun. By the way, chat, if you're wanting to watch these videos on YouTube after these streams, uh, exclamation mark YT, we've got the uh, remainder of. Well, we've got Forza Motorsport 1 and 2, the entire series on there. So if you want to uh, catch up and get back up to speed with this uh, walkthrough, then feel free to. No, exactly. Hell, I wouldn't even go up against the greatest female boxer, to be honest, because she would absolutely batter me. But again, I'm, I'm an exception. I'm a fat slob, so... I'm fat. I'm not physically fit. You know. I don't enjoy exercise. I, I'm obviously not, like, substantially, like, huge. But I'm definitely not physical. I don't get in enjoyment out of physical activities that much. Granted, Beat Saber's fun. I'll be honest. Playing Beat Saber, I really enjoy that. But I think that's more because it's a video game. So it's disguised. The thing that ever helped my ADHD was Adderall. It made focusing so much better. Yeah, I think Adderall is the American version of it. We've got uh, things like Ritalin and uh, Mediconet. Stuff like that in the UK. I think there's a new one, actually. Uh, Stratero was another name as well we got in the UK. I don't know what the names are 100% in the UK, though. There's there's two different drugs, I believe. There's uh, methylphenidate, hydrochloride, uh, which is a ADHD drug. It's also a drug used to get really high. It's actually one of the... Uh, I don't know whether it's the top 10 or the t in the top 20, but it's in a top... Definitely in the top 20 of most dangerous drugs in the world. But because of how it's controlled so much in the UK, it, it's barely, barely dangerous. Not many people die from it. Well, actually, they can, sort of. But Ritalin was a downer medication. It kind of is, but it's, it's the opposite. So... Um, ADHD mines work completely differently to the point that you can take um, it's, it's sort of like caffeine so in someone without ADHD they'll have caffeine to give them a boost of energy um, when they're tired and it gets them focused on work with ADHD it's slightly different so ADHD will struggle to focus whether they're tired, whether they're minds are racing, whatever. But it does the opposite effect, where it calms the mind um, and then gets the mind more focused. So sometimes it has the same effect as a normal person, but majority of the time it is to calm the mind. And caffeine can do the same job as Ritalin, whatever. But obviously when you're like medic, trying to medicate it and do it naturally, for, well, not naturally, but like, if you're trying to control it at all times, Obviously, medication is the best way to go. You can't really medicate yourself with caffeine. But, like, if I need to focus, an energy drink will completely focus me. The only problem is, it. I still feel a crash with that. Yeah, so your mind will focus more. So you probably had an unfocused mind, and then once you took the drugs, it would start making you focus. The problem that I found with a lot of ADHD drugs, and the reason why I stopped taking them... Um, is because I enjoyed having fun, just being me, being my happy old self. Granted, in college it was never good, me being me, because I was kind of hyperactive. I still am. But when it came to being at home, I didn't like the feeling of just feeling like I was being controlled by these drugs. Um... The problem is, when you stop taking, even if you don't have it for a couple of days, the effects of ADHD drugs can be in your system for about three weeks. I kid you not, after I stopped taking my ADHD drugs, they were still in effect in my system two and a half weeks afterwards. Like, it was only about two weeks afterwards when I started feeling like I didn't have anything holding me back. I haven't had an ADHD drug in three years now. 
two or three years? Two and a half, maybe? I'm not sure. Um, my ADHD doctor obviously was like, that's not a good idea. And I said, well, I don't care whether it's a good idea or not. I'm doing it. Um, I'd obviously done it after my GCSEs, so I didn't have to worry about any exams. It's probably why I failed in college, let's be honest. But I'm going to be honest, college is a bit of a waste now. It's the way to get you in this shitty government system that we have. Again, I'm not a government conspiracy theorist, but I really do think the government and staying in our education system at the moment does more damage than good to people. Do, do, do. Hey, not bad. 11 grand. Woohoo! Alright, so we are going to do the Euro Hatch shootout. Uh, this is going to be around the Twin Ring, Mategi, Silverstone, Circuit de Catalonia, and Ladera Test Track. Let's get going. Because that chaotic is a very valid point that I want to explain on the video. So, um, with the majority of Europe, Europe uses the metric system, which is a fairly simple system. Everything is divisible by a thousand, pretty much. So if you go from milliliters to liters, it's a thousand um, kilograms. Uh, grams to kilograms is a thousand. Kilos to tons is a thousand. Um, kilometers an hour. So if you're looking at a meter to a kilometer is a thousand. Uh, a millimeter to a meter is a thousand. So yeah, it makes the most sense. The metric system. The US system, although it's a little more complicated, the numbers don't match up as evenly as just divisible by a thousand, it still makes more sense because they work together, all those numbers. Ah, here's where we get to the UK. So the UK, we pretty much do everything in liters, grams, kilos, unless you're in this... 50 plus range in which case you'll still weigh stuff in pounds and stone and all that because they're weird um anyone below the age of 50 will use kilos because they're normal um but our entire motoring network still runs off of yards miles an hour miles, all that stuff. Our car system, our automotive industry runs off of miles still. Which makes no sense. So the UK is like a hybrid country which is confusing. Like, By all means, I would understand a lot more if we were all metric or all imperial. Is it imperial? The US system? I don't know. I think it is. Anyways. That's why I genuinely think the UK should change our speed limits and everything. Change our cars to kilometers an hour. I really think we should. Yeah, so I, I think it's good that cars now have two different numbers on them. Because granted, we have a camper van, right? And that thing is only in kilometers an hour. So trying to drive that on UK roads is a pain in the ass. Because you have to have a speed chart... And you have to work out what the speed is. And it's extremely difficult to not speed. You have to always go under the speed limit. And that's just as dangerous as speeding sometimes. Ah, oh, that bugs me. Ah, oh, I'm going to go on a rant now. Anyone that goes under the speed limit. And drives under the speed limit. Unless you're a learner. Learning how to drive a car. With L plates, you should not be going below the speed limit. If you go below the speed limit, hand in your driver's license and fuck off. Like, I'm a learner still. But I'm at that point where I'm experienced enough. And I, I realize how dangerous it is to be going under the speed limit. As well as going over it. Because the speed limit is like a universal rule. That everyone has to go that same speed. So if someone is slow, someone behind is going to be up your ass. If someone is going fast, someone in front of you is going to be going slow. It, it just doesn't work. You have to stick as close to that speed limit as possible. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> yeah, it is, it is stupid. There is a moth in my room. I can hear it going. Eh, eh. It's fucking annoying. Little bastard. Uh, you now have a 30% discount on intake manifold and throttle body upgrades. Let's go. Yeah, so... I will agree with you on that. The elderly do cause a lot of crashes. I don't think it's all because they drive slow. But granted, elderly people driving slow causes both a lot of stress for normal drivers as well as uncertainty. I mean, I'm not going to lie. So my great-grandmother, she's, she's in a home at the moment, so... Um, she's not on the road anymore. I think she stopped driving about three or four years ago. But in her last year of driving, so we used to we used to go to the shop, uh, go clothes shopping like once a week with her, just to get her out of the house and stuff like that. One day, um, I don't know what possessed me to do it, because she still could drive, and I would go with my mother. As well. And I kid you not, I decided to go in the car with her, right? Um, and give her a hand. Now, this was also the same day that I, because I was helping her out, but mum was going in her car as well, coming to the same place. <laughs> so, I decided I'll go with Nan today, rather than mum. And I kid you not, I've never been so petrified being in the passenger seat of a, of a driver before. Holy fuck. And I kid you not, I think I didn't even have much knowledge of driving cars. If I had the knowledge I have today, I would have realized, I would have shit myself even more because I would have realized how dangerous she was on the road. Fuck me. Like, I'm, I'm kidding you. Fucking kill me. <laughs> like, it, it would have been that kind of scenario. Um. But yeah, we we got to a little bungalow. And uh, I remember it vividly. Because I got out of the car. Started to get a shop in. And I cracked my skull open. I, d I don't know if I cracked my skull open. But I definitely hit my head on the car. And there was blood coming out of my head. And it hurt for a good two, three weeks. But it was, like, under my hair. It was, like, here. It's, it's all fine now, I think. I haven't shaved all my hair off to notice, but I can only assume it's fine. I haven't died. But, yeah, I proper fucked me head up. I was bleeding and everything. But, obviously, because my nan's old, I was like, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. Because I didn't want her to pander about it. And then as she came round... To try and check if it was alright. I sort of pulled my hand away. From my head. I was like oh god. It was like red. And I was like. Oh, oh god maybe I'm not fine. <laughs> I had a headache for about three days. But that was about it. It, it wasn't substantial enough to. Worry. Um, I, I wasn't sick or anything. I wasn't concussed. I think it, if I was sick, I probably would have gone up to a &E, but I was fine. One day we'll have uh, full automated self-driving cars. Imagine all the crashes that would be avoided by drunks, heart attacks, seizures, and so on. I mean, I've seen a lot of self-driving cars that have actually stopped and maneuvered quite advanced stuff, so I really do think self-driving's good. The only problem I have with self-driving is I enjoy the aspect of driving a car so as long as self-driving is smart enough to work around humans as well as other self-driving cars and means that I can still drive and they don't put laws that says that every car must be self-driving and stuff like that then I'm all for it as soon as a law comes out that says every car has to be self-driving fuck no I'm against it But I do, I do think self-driving is good. I mean, there's a lot of safety measures in place that um, self-driving can't go wrong. 
and the chances that it does go wrong we hope that drivers will be still responsible enough to focus I love to drive too was a truck driver for a few months ah, fair enough what's it like uh, truck driving what's truck driving like Hey, not bad. I assume it's not like the description that Jeremy Clarkson gives it all the time. <laughs> that's funny. That's a funny clip. <laughs> Celebrate and dance with me. One more time. Don't make good money until you've reached 500,000 miles. Fucking hell, that's a lot of miles. You'd be in your 40s by then. And by that point, you've got... A gut that can't... Can barely go over the steering wheel. Sorry, can barely go under it. <laughs> that's what I meant to say. You've got a big-ass gut. <laughs> by the time you've... Been trucking for that long. Yeah, that seems that seems a bit of a excessive number to be honest. Like I think a hundred thousand miles is quite a substantial amount of distance to have driven. Hmm. Fair enough. I'll be totally honest though, I don't think a truck driver's job is too difficult. Um until they get to normal roads like when you're on a highway it's a fairly chill job like obviously you still have to be focused but that's like in a normal car but i know when driving a car driving on normal roads is a lot more difficult it's just natural so i, th I think truck driving would actually be quite an enjoyable job while oh yeah in the, in the snow it's gonna be fucking scary i ain't driven a car in the snow but i know Breaking distance is like 10 times. If I was driving a truck in the snow, it wouldn't go over 10 miles an hour. But I think a large majority of um, trucks don't really operate in the UK. If there's... I mean, we've got like gritters and stuff like that. So on like busy roads, we'll just get rid of the snow because out the entire uk is like a fairly dense country to the point that a majority of roads and businesses will have some form of gritting done uh, or something like that wow auto mod blocked that for racism Because apparently hitting black ice is racist now. Great, Twitch. We're really in the woke community now. Fucking hell. If you hit black ice, only thing to save you a chain. <laughs> okay, I, th I think that might be why it flagged it then. <laughs> that might be why it flagged it. <laughs> Doesn't matter how good the tire is. Yeah. I mean... Tires, I mean, that's why uh, rally cars have studs in their snow tires, because the rubber's going to do fuck all. It's the metal that's going to save them. Basically, rally cars' tires are just, um, what's it called? Oh, yeah, I know, I know, we've got black eyes here as well. <laughs> I just think it's funny that it blocked it. <laughs> it's just fucking dumb. Uh, but, yeah. Rally cars tires are basically just truck tires with chains, but in a much smaller form factor because they got to be lighter. I can guarantee you, if someone made a rally car tire on steroids, it would do the same job. Like if you have massive s spikes on the tires, similar to how a rally car does it, I think it'd be better than a, a truck with chains. But then again, you have to swap the tire out when it snows, so. Do, 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 do. I 
I still will not forget the Estonia rally where they rally drove fucking trucks around the high... Was it the high stage? No. It was the other one. I can't remember what it is. Alright, we've got a 30% discount on exhaust upgrades now by Super Sprint Exhaust. Woohoo! Uh, yeah, I mean, fair enough. The spikes were probably dull a bit faster. But, um, oh shit. <laughs> spikes would probably dull faster, but... They would perform better. They'd probably be safer. I'm sure they can make like a blanket or something that just has spikes in it that can go over the tires and does a similar job as to what like tire chains would do but it's just a, a blanket that just sticks on but then that's got the risk of coming off but then so does chains so I don't know someone look into that if you if you can make that successful you'll be a millionaire but I take 1% cut. If I find out those things are invented, I'll uh, take this video clip and send it to him and say that I invented it first. So I take credit. <laughs> I want a 1% cut of all, all revenue. To be fair, that's not even unreasonable to ask for 1% cut. That still set me up for fucking life. Ice skating blades are weird. They're like double bladed. I was watching like a YouTube video on them. They're not flat. They're like sharp on the edges and they've got like a concave shape to them. So that way they can glide, but they also don't put too much pressure on. Apparently that bit in the middle is like a heat chamber that holds water. So that um, it can also add lubrication to it as well. Which apparently makes it glide even better. Which again is all stuff that I did not know. I just thought it was like a stick of metal that would just slide on top. Because I sort of assumed ice was slidey. It is, but you know. Better dig into the ice without dulling out as fast. Yeah, but I kind of assumed that it was just a flat piece of metal anyways. So that it would always just be dull, you know. I don't know why my brain thought that, but it just did. You know, if it's always flat and it's always dull, then it never needs sharpening. Which kind of makes sense why they offer blade sharpening as a service, doesn't it? <laughs> why did my brain not think of that? Okay. <laughs> God, my brain will, uh... It, it, it's always thought that for so many years until I saw a picture of it. Saw that YouTube video. And I can't believe my brain didn't think, hang on, but they have <laughs> skate sharpening services, so they must be blades. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm done. After this, I'm done. <laughs> I'll get me thumbnails, I'll get out of here. <laughs> oh god. It's been a long day. I should have had four videos recorded today, I've only done three. I really can't be asked to do more. At this point, I would have had four and done my thumbnails. I'd, I'm definitely taking an hour off that timer, because I think I've just been t chatting too much on stream. So uh, we'll go for 14 hours. What's the temp where you live? It's 105 where I am. Oh, fucking hell. Uh, that's in Fahrenheit. That's in American language. Uh, uh, I will get back to you on that one then. Because I, I have no clue. <laughs> I will have to convert it. Uh, right, seven grand. Not bad. Oh, yeah, level 24. <gasps> Wait, hang on. Next level is the Bugatti, I believe. <gasps> Ten grand. Alright. 
And we got the Porsche. Is it a GT2 RS, I believe? Do you know what? I really like the look of that. I really like the look of that. I will find an excuse to drive that. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, comment down below and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.